Hi Sweetness, Dad here. Uh, this is like uh, my current pride and joy. It's the uh, Smith & Wesson Model 27. It's a 357 Magnum. Revol it's actually the first 357 Magnum. Mom bought me this nifty Indiana Jones gun rig for uh, my birthday. It's cool, huh? Anyway. The, three, the Model 27. This is the original 357 Magnum. It was developed by guys Phil Sharp, Elmer Keith, and Douglas Wesson. But they started off the well, Smith & Wesson Model 3844, which is basically what you see here. But it was designed for, it was their 44 Special and 44 Magnum and 45 Colt revolver. They didn't call it the end frame at the time, but it was a big end frame. And uh, it was chambered in 38 Special. So they wanted a, the police wanted a hotter cartridge because 1935, this was the, uh, they were bootleggers and organized crime and stuff like that going on. So they wanted something more powerful than the 38 Special. Uh, and then later on, the well, that was uh, the 3844 came out in like the 1930, 29, 30, something like that. And then it was Phil Sharp, the uh, hand loader. He's loading up uh, super hot 38 Special rounds, and Smith and Wesson made this gun to take it. And then with uh, Armor Keith. Douglas Wesson of Smith & Wesson. Douglas Keith was the inventor of the 44 Magnum. Uh, but they invented this 357 Magnum cartridge and they called it the registered Magnum. And they made about 5,000 of them. Uh, and you could order, they cost like 60 bucks, which in the middle of the depression, 60 bucks was a lot of money. So they didn't enjoy like high, a lot of sales. Uh, George Patton had one. He had a three and a half inch barrel. This is a four inch barrel. And Patton had the ivory grips, but you could get it anywhere from a three and a half to I think eight and three quarters inch length barrel. Uh, you could get it with sights. You could have it zeroed at 25 yards, either to shoot dead center or with a six, a six o'clock bullseye hold. Uh, and it became registered. It, the gun, you ordered it and then they mailed it to you because they didn't have a certain gun control acts back then, so they just mailed it to your house. And uh, you filled out a card to register it, and they would send you a registration, a, a certificate with a registration number. He said, okay, this is your registered Magnum. And only about half of the people who bought them actually sent the card in. After the 5,000, then they made another 2,000 uh, non-registered. But they still, non-registered Magnums, but it was still this gun. And then they continued to make them, but you know, I think if this is a 1955 or 57, somewhere around there, Smith & Wesson uh, came up with their naming conventions that we have today. And they named this the Model 27. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful gun and a beautifully handling gun. Uh, it's the frame is the 44 Magnum frame with the 357 uh, uh, cartridge you can see the, the size you can see how much meat you got on there so it's a real beefy heavy gun and it's really nice shooting very very accurate pretty mellow too so anyway this is my favorite gun and uh, you'll get to see it and probably shoot it when you Get here in a couple of weeks, which will be cool. It's my Indiana Jones like gun belt or rig. I don't think Indiana Jones he didn't, he carried like a Smith and Wesson model or a Colt Smith and Wesson model 1917 and a Colt Mike 1917. I don't think he ever had one of these. Anyway, I love you and I can't wait to see you in a couple of weeks.